You're about to hear a program that, incredibly, the country's premier radio network, NPR, has failed to cancel for almost 25 years. That's network malpractice. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to hear more of the show, check out your local NPR station, or for times and listings, go to our website, cartalk.com. 92287, hello, you're on Car Talk. Hi, it's Christy. Christy! Christy, from, from wait, where? wait, uh, oh, don't, don't tell us. Don't, yeah, no, she's going to tell us where she's from. We're going to tell her how to spell it. I'm from Chicago. So, oh, from Chicago. Oh, so it's just C-H-R-I-S-T-I-E. T-Y. T-Y. Yeah, right, that's what he meant, T-Y. That's yeah. what I meant. <laughs> yeah. See, if you, had been, if you had been, like, from, like, from you know, some other place. Like, from L.A. <laughs> K-R-Y-S-T-E. I-E. No, E. E-E. <laughs> <laughs> Not the way a cheerleader spells it. Right, that's a cheerleader spelling. Yeah. <laughs> you got it. So what's going on, Christy? I want to ask you guys about a car problem that happened about 15 years ago oh. to my dad's old Citation that I was driving. I've been feeling bad about it for a while, and I just kind of <laughs> like to find out exactly you just want what to put happened. You want rest. closure. They call this closure. Yes, it is. Closure. Yeah. This <laughs> is something that's been plaguing you for 15 years. Causing you nightmares. Is this something he's been nights. blaming you for for 15 years? Well, no, he years? doesn't really know. I mean, oh. it's, 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 but, you know. But there is still <laughs> reference to it after all these years? Well, yeah. I mean, you know, oh. there's, there's, you know, the car the yeah. car died, and I think he was, he okay. was kind of surprised. Lay it on us. Okay. Um, I was driving. I was about 16 years old, and I was driving from South End, Indiana. Oh, it was your fault. <laughs> well, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm driving. It's a 19, I think it was about a 1982 Chevy Citation. And what, year, what year would this have been? This would have been like 1982. This was in 83. I think the car was maybe a year old. Yeah, so you're driving from South Bend to where? So I'm trying to get down to the uh, Indiana University down in Bloomington, Indiana. It's about a four and a half hour drive. Yeah, I'm with you. Okay, I get about, I drive for about like half an hour and the temperature light starts kind of coming on. I mean, it's kind of coming on, it's going off, it's coming on. It's not doing it in any kind of consistent way. You know, it'll blink on for a while. And so anyway, I was just like, okay, this is an electrical problem. So forget So it's this. like, this is a glitch. Yeah, yeah. right. Because yeah. we've had some glitchy cars before. We've had some real sure. lemons. So I'm like, this is just another weirdo car thing. Yeah. So I go into the glove compartment, get out a piece of tape, put it over the light. Because <laughs> I just don't want to be dealing with this. Were you listening to our to show go. at that time? <laughs> no, I didn't know you guys were. I don't, were you guys on the air that Well, time? yeah, we used to sell the special tape, in fact. Yeah, <laughs> we still have it. <laughs> Yeah, and, so you put the tape over the light. I put the tape over the you light. Keep driving. I keep driving. Well, I start losing acceleration, but that doesn't really stop me. I keep going until the car actually just stops. I mean, I can't, I can't actually go any further. Yeah. And now I'm in, I'm kind of like in southern Indiana, and I get towed down to this little mechanic shop. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. They put a new thermostat in the car, and but Good. they told me to go back to South Bend. They're like, this is, you know. They, they said this is like a Band-Aid, but, you know, go back to South Bend. And, of course, I didn't. I drove another three hours, went down to Indiana, you know, Bloomington, drove back the next day, four and a half hours. You drove down to Bloomington because your boyfriend was I there, right? Had a, I had a party to go to down there. I was young. Yes. So... You turn around, you drive four hours back. Yeah. And... And, you know, I, the car was fine. I the don't light is not any... on. Oh, no, no. Tape's off and Tape's the light's off. up. Light's not blinking anymore. Good. Problem solved. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay, so I get back to South Bend, and, uh, you know, I, I thought everything was fine. Those mechanics just fixed it. You know, thermostat problem, whatever. And uh, my dad then got in the car to go to work. He worked about 10 minutes from our house, and the car just blows up. <laughs> it just, like, it just stopped. Oh. The engine block was almost melted together. <laughs> it was a really, it was a major, <laughs> major problem. And my dad was just utterly confused. And, of course, he came home and asked me if anything happened. And I said, I don't I know. Gosh. You know. Ooh, <laughs> yeah. I don't know car ran like a dream all the way down and all the way back. <laughs> So what oh. I'm trying to figure out is why the car, why did, like, just putting a thermostat in do, and, and did I really ruin his car, I guess? Or was this just a random thing that you... Random my foot. <laughs> you wish it. You overheated the engine. Okay. Because, the ther because the thermostat was malfunctioning, and when the light started to come on, it was telling you the engine was running hot. You why ignored did it, just it stay and, on? Huh? Why did the light just stay on? Why was it going on and off? Well, it was probably staying on after you put the black tape over it, but you couldn't see it. <laughs> Yeah. So the light was staying on enough to let you know that the thing was overheating, and the engine got hotter and hotter, and you began to melt the pistons and melt the rings and yeah. deform the crankshaft and, and stretch out the connecting rods. 
Yeah. And then when they put the thermostat in, the new thermostat, you must have aver just averted a meltdown by seconds. Oh, you think? Oh, yeah. okay. I think so. How you made it back for? How you did another six hours of driving? is somewhat miraculous, actually. Oh. And you are right in thinking that you had nothing to do with it, but you're wrong. And it can only be attributed to the fine engineering of this of the this Chevrolet engine. Yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. <laughs> really? I always thought that was a crappy car, but maybe not. Huh? And, and well, it was after you got a hold of it. You know, when, when people say that the engine melted, typically what happens is you throw a rod. It's very okay. common. And okay. you did that. You absolutely, you are absolutely responsible for this engine. Oh. Yeah, when the thing gets really hot, what happens is the bearing material will melt, the connecting rod bearings and the main bearings. And and then uh, you'll, you'll have low oil pressure and the bearing will start, because the bearing is melted, the connecting rod will start slapping against the... the the crankshaft, and next thing you know, that the, the thing breaks because the bolts can't hold it, and the engine is toast. Oh, okay. Everyone knows that when that temperature light comes on, you stop. No, not everyone. Because no, that, not everyone knows mean. that. Because driving with the temperature light on is the kiss of oh, death. Is Dad still alive, or did this kill him? Uh, no, he's still alive. Well, how do you feel now? I mean, now that we've told you that absolutely, well, you well, almost without a doubt, you were responsible for the demise, the very early demise of this wonderful car that Dad had. I feel bad because he, I know, you know, he yeah. really never knew what happened, and he just thought it was just another bad car. What so if we was. told him? Uh, Would that be bad? <laughs> Would it be cathartic for you? Now, Chrissy, I think you need, I think you, you need to resolve this. I mean, just knowing your knowing is not enough. You don't think so? Dad, we need Dad's number. But you know. We need his number. <laughs> <laughs> Is he home? Okay. Go ahead. He's at work. We're, we'll we'll take the number off the air, but we're calling Dad at work. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. And what's his name? It's Richard. Richard. Right. He's How old is Richard? Richard. He's 60. He just had a birthday. He's 61. 61. He probably would be retired now if he were still making car payments. <laughs> <laughs> They offered him that early retirement, but he said, no, I got to pay off this Buick that I'm driving. Wait, we're going to try to get him. Can you stay on the line, sure. Christy? I mean, you don't mind confronting him about this. He's, he's got a real bad phone manner. I'm just warning you. Oh, don't worry. So, so do, we. do we. Okay. Okay, we're dialing him now. Okay. Christy, do you know if daddy -O knows us? Yeah, he does. Mm -hmm. he, he does? Yeah, our whole family likes the show. Cool. In that case, he's likely to hang up on us or not. <laughs> Dick Conklin. Hey, Richard. Yes. This is uh, Tom and Ray Maliazzi from Car Talk. Ah, oh, I'm I'm blessed. <laughs> well, not necessarily. <laughs> not necessarily. No. We were just talking to your daughter, Christy. Uh, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, she called to cleanse her soul. Okay. She she called to describe to us a little incident that occurred in 1982 with your Chevy Citation. You may not remember this. You may have tried, oh, to, sure. yeah. tried to block this out. Yeah, yeah, seared, I think, is a proper verb. Yeah, she okay. said it's like threw a rod. You threw a rod. Threw a rod. And, and, and you have no idea why this happened. Uh, have you I had don't. your suspicions all these years? Uh, lack of oil. Yeah. Yeah, but do you know anything else about it? Uh, no. You don't know all the dirty details. There are some things that Pater Familius doesn't want to know. Yeah. Well, okay, well, we'll t we're going to tell you all the details. She was driving the thing to Bloomington. You knew that. Yes, I knew that. And along the way, the temperature light began flashing. You didn't know that. Uh, no. No, you didn't She's know that. She's never told you this. And, and she, it was annoying. She, she kept driving without any water in the radiator? Well, worse than that. She put black tape over the light because the light was... <laughs> <laughs> And she, <laughs> At least you can laugh about it, Richard. And she finally coasted into a gas station with the engine glowing. <laughs> and, the, and the two guys that were there told her that she would probably hit fried it, but they would, they would put a new thermostat in and send her back home. Oh, wonderful. She didn't go home. She didn't go she, home. She didn't take their advice because the light went out. She went to the party down in, in Bloomington, then drove all the way back to South Bend the next day. Ooh. And gave you the car, making you think that everything was just hunky-dory. And she's been living... She's been living a life of of sin, deception. crime, and deception. Well, now I think you would all. ask if, if if she if she recounted the story to us correctly, you would ask her if anything unusual had happened on her trip, and she denied it. Yeah, she said no, no, fine, no, no problems. Well, she can't live with this lie she's, anymore. She's, she's with us right now, Dick. Oh no. Yeah, Christy. Hi, Dad. Uh, hi, Dad. <laughs> hi, Dad. <laughs> sure. Hi, Chrissy. <laughs> Chrissy, you 
didn't tell him about the broken axle on the 1966 view. <laughs> Break that axle. <laughs> <laughs> come on, Christy, come the, clean. About the new radiator on the 1984 Nova. <laughs> now, Dad, you bought me that broken axle car for $500 and sent me, like, on my merry way. That's why the axle broke. That thing was a lemon. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> Tom and Ray, you've got to realize that uh, my daughter is to cars what uh, Al Van Berg is to Melody, you know, the expressionist conductor. <laughs> yes. Well, oh, whatever. Oh, uh, look boy. At her. The country ought to be thankful that she's now in a city with decent public transportation. <laughs> so you you don't hold it against her that, that she withheld this crucial information all these years. Well, not in this public forum you want. I, no. I love my daughter. That's you my love your daughter. Guy. Isn't it something? Ah, uh, thanks, Dad. <laughs> is, is Christy your only your only child? Uh, she's my only daughter. She's your only my daughter. only limits tester. <laughs> <laughs> well, Christy, I mean, do you have do you want to make like a, a formal? public apology to daddy both for wrecking his car and for living this life of deception for 15 years? <laughs> but I suffered for this. Well, so well, did. Yeah, you have you have suffered for... You, you didn't suffer any more than my pocketbook at the time. <laughs> did it cost a lot? I can't well, remember. Uh, Fred and Jim's garage bought a boat. In the, uh, <laughs> for each of them. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, it, it was terminal. It had to be reconstructed from scratch. Oh, yeah, no, it's yeah. terminal. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. I, I think oh, yeah. this, this, this warrants a, a full-scale... Apology. Oh, come on, you guys. Come on, Christy. <laughs> and some groveling and, and maybe a few tears. Like, Dad, uh, I'm sorry. It's 15 years ago. Ah! <laughs> there is no statute of limitations on deception to your father. Oh, my God. And there's no statute of limitations on forgiveness either. Chris. Oh, God what, bless oh. you, See, Richard. isn't he nice? Okay, I'm sorry, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that, well, that sounded real heartfelt. <laughs> sorry, Dad. Sorry. Hey, hey that, that's as much as you're going to get out of it. <laughs> it sounds that way. Well, she's your daughter, not ours. Good luck. Thank God. <laughs> okay, yeah, hey, Richard, you're a wonderful guy. Oh, thanks, Mike. <laughs> Have a nice day. Okay, you too. See you. See you later. See you, okay. Christy. Bye, okay, Christy. Bye, bye, guys. Try to be good. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Christy. Yeah. Keep her. Yeah, we'll leave you two to chat. Bye, bye. <laughs>